Hi, I'm Cedar Saigo, and I'm at City Lights Books, and I'll be reading a passage from Kane's book by Alexander Trochi that was banned in Britain in 1963 uh, because of its graphic depiction of drug abuse. It had begun to rain. The streets and the great buildings around Victoria depressed me. I had many memories of Victoria Station. During the war I had arrived and departed from Victoria many times, and the streets and buildings round about were quite familiar. I remembered seeing Gill's Stations of the Cross in Westminster Cathedral, refusing a prostitute who had often to masturbate me in one of the air raid shelters opposite the station, going with a prostitute to one of the streets nearby, and thinking she might be older than my mother. The railway bar, the tea rooms cloudy with steam from huge tea urns, and coffee pots and dusty at the same time and the dry sandwiches under glass, the long tiled lavatories with their shifting men, and the rush of commuters with bowler hats and umbrellas in the early morning. It was after six o'clock, fifteen hours in London before the boat train, time to get drunk and sober up, to eat two meals and go to bed with someone, plenty of time and at the same time short, like a bee's visit to a flower and no commitments. I took a taxi and told the driver to take me to Piccadilly Circus, which was central enough and where I knew I could find a room easily in one of the big hotels, which corresponded to the anonymity of my visit. No questions, all the necessities, all visitors passing through. Across broad carpets to the lift, silently upwards to the nth floor, along a corridor, realizing they had given me a room in the rear, which would open onto an air shaft, and wishing now I had asked specifically for one which opened onto the street. The key in the lock, the door thrown open, and the light switch on, the room looking blankly as it always was and would be, impervious to the stream of human beings who had come and gone, the neatly, med the neatly made bed, the bed light now being switched on and off by the porter to indicate where it was, vague hotel noises from the air shaft, the smiling face, all right, sir? Tipped, gone, the door closed silently behind him. I squashed my cigarette in the ashtray on the glass-topped table beside the bed protected against cigarette burns. Lay on the bed and looked up at the white ceiling, at the center of which was a small but vaguely noticeable grill. It occurred to me that it might be used to house a camera or a microphone or to inject a poison pellet to fill the room with gas.